There was a time when westerns ruled cinema, when Clint Eastwood and John Wayne were household names that brought stoic gunslingers to life. Titles like Pale Rider, Blazing Saddles and The Great Silence defined pop culture at the time. But like all genres in cinema, the era of the western came to an end as the hard-hitting muscle men of the 80s took over the action scene. Knock, knock. While a handful of high-quality productions like Hell on Wheels kept the western genre afloat, it's hard to think of definitive western movies of the modern age or any superstars created by them. For better or for worse, Hollywood has changed. Hollywood today pursues modern audiences that see western machismo as toxic. That's not toxic. No, it's just natural masculine behavior. They see frontier heroes as imperialists and anyone white as simply the representation of colonial ancestral sin. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. To no one's surprise, the crude, blue-collar life of the cowboy is elusive to an industry run by coastal elites and blue-haired Twitter mobs. In today's climate, an authentic, compelling, unapologetic modern western was only a pipe dream until Yellowstone. Yellowstone was the perfect antidote to the many problems plaguing the modern western. While it's by no means a classical western and offers less gunslinging than the classics, it offers something even more compelling to new audiences. Yellowstone offers well-written characters brought to life by a competent cast and cinematography, directed by a veteran of the genre. Being set in the gorgeous backdrop of present-day Montana makes Yellowstone intriguing and relatable to audiences living today, mapping the timeless tradition of Western storytelling to a modern setting. Yellowstone doesn't shy away from exploring the universal flaws of all people or the legacy of intergenerational animosity and the American Indian Reservation system. Taylor Sheridan somehow cuts through the rhetorical challenges of making a modern western to deliver a masterpiece. There's a lot of defiance in the way that I do it. It's it's not surprising that critics hate it because uh, it's designed for the critics hate. hate what they hate Yellowstone C and confounded by its success. Oh god, they can't get their heads around why it's success. There's been New York Times has done multiple <laughs> multiple articles where they're doing like this essay on how is this shit so popular. <laughs> So, what makes Yellowstone great, and how did it become the best western on TV today? Yellowstone is set in modern-day Montana, around Yellowstone National Park and the city of Bozeman. Seeing how gorgeous this part of the American Midwest is, it's no surprise that it has been a battleground for centuries. At the heart of Yellowstone is the battle for the Dutton Ranch, which occupies many acres of land around the national park. Before the Duttons, the land belonged to the Broken Rock tribe, who seek to expand their reserve, repossess the land, and achieve a pre-colonial landscape. I'm going to pull down every fence, and any evidence that your family ever existed will be removed from the property. It'll look like it used to, when it was ours. The Duttons settled on the land at some point in the 19th century and have a strong interest in keeping the land viable to herd cattle and horses. At the same time, multiple new interests seek to take the land for entirely different reasons. First, it's the Californian implants that want to gentrify and build resorts. Then it's environmentalists that hate infrastructure. Then it's corporations and state actors that want to develop infrastructure and grow the economy. Feuding over land and legacy is by no means a new story idea, but it's a compelling interpersonal drama and nuance with which each side is presented that elevates this show. Every new threat to the Dutton's ranch is formidable, putting them in a constant battle to protect their legacy under the constant risk of losing their lives. Over time, the Dutton struggle draws the appreciation of the natives, who have a historical claim but are even less capable of defending the land from the dangerous, sophisticated attacks of multinational corporations. 
Yellowstone doesn't shy away from addressing what the Dutton's represent as settlers, but also portrays the complexities of repossessing modern territories or rehashing scenes of the past with people today that had nothing to do with the actions of their ancestors. I will erase you from the future. I am the past. Catching up with you. You're a thief. And you're going to prison where the past catches up to everyone. Just as the natives underwent vicious force to protect their land and lost, the Dattons have to sacrifice everything, even their own lives, to hold what they own. It's not a battle between red and blue or red and white, it's a battle between new and old, past and present. The shared experience of protecting Yellowstone unites the Dattons and the natives in an unlikely alliance against the relentless forces of change. While Yellowstone portrays the downsides of modern development on the environment and land, it also balances this with the economic benefits of a vibrant economy. Infrastructure would bring jobs and economic opportunities to the state, benefiting many more people than the undeveloped land does. What this provides the state is the added tax revenue from the airport, from ticket sales, car rentals, hotel taxes, fuel sales. 300 jobs you eliminated. And you cancel the airport project. There's a lot of very unhappy people on the reservation. While it would have been simpler to make villains of the natives, the Dattons, the Californian implants, or the corporations, Yellowstone explores their unique perspectives, their struggles, and their legacy. Audiences may still be invested in a side, but not from a lack of understanding of different perspectives. Ultimately, Yellowstone delivers a nuanced exploration of timeless issues that have befallen the Midwest since the colonial era and delivers one of the most compelling stories of land and legacy. If the setting and plot are the heart of Yellowstone, its compelling characters are the mind that give it direction. John Dutton is Yellowstone. Kevin Costner plays a gruff, resourceful patriot that has seen it all. A local politician that throws his weight around to protect his family but isn't afraid to get his hands dirty and do the work of the lowest farmhand. When his first son dies in a scuffle with the natives, John picks his second son, Case, as the heir of the Dutton Ranch. Case is a retired veteran of the US Army suffering from PTSD, sharing the bravado of his father but none of the restraint. Unlike his father, Case is not keen on fighting for the ranch and prioritizes his own family with a broken rock native girl. What Case lacks in corporate tact, John finds in his daughter Beth. Beth is a cunning corporate wolf that makes or breaks companies through hook and crook. At the same time, she is an emotionally wrecked alcoholic, borne down by regrets of a botched abortion. Beth is the epitome of the flawed yet powerful female character desperately lacking in modern cinema. Unlike Mary Sue's that punch down dudes three times their size, Beth takes down entire companies believably through espionage and subterfuge. Consumed by regret and denial of her role in the abortion that left her barren, Beth torments her adopted brother Jamie who brought her to the abortion clinic. Jamie is a lawyer that defends the Dutton's legal interests. He is extremely competent but also played as a selfish coward. If I had to point out a flaw in the characterization of the Dutton's, I'd say it's in the relationship between Jamie and the Dutton's. Jamie lets Beth walk all over him even if he fights for the Dutton's in court and holds every secret of the family as leverage. The Dattons rely on their loyal cowboys that generally get good character development despite minimal roles. The ranch hand, Rip, is a part-time wrangler, part-time hitman that keeps the ranch running, a role that Cole Hauser plays perfectly since his standout roles in Too Fast Too Furious and Pitch Black. Beyond the Dutton Ranch, Governor Linnell is a smoke show and a remarkable diplomat that weighs the needs of our political career, her love interest John Dutton, and the Broken Rock Indian Reservation. Personally, Chief Thomas Rainwater of the Broken Rock Indian Reservation is easily the standout performance outside the Duttons. Jill Birmingham plays a resourceful Ivy League trained politician that has no illusions about his power as a highly educated wealthy Indian chief. 
While it would have been easy to play him off as a victim of the intersectional shit pile. Thank you for such a visceral reminder of what it's like to be oppressed. Ah, oh, cut the shit. Chief Thomas is a formidable adversary to John Dutton that cares for his land and people as much as John cares for his. He utilizes his education and business acumen to repossess Yellowstone from John Dutton. I figured it'll take about 14 billion to buy it all. All what? The valley? but quickly realizes that both men are outmatched by bigger adversaries, thereafter forging an alliance with his longtime foe. We want the same thing, for very different reasons. We'll have nothing to fight over if they build a city here. In the end, Chief Thomas and John Dutton capture the modern incarnation of the iconic settler and his native adversary, with both men featuring evolved, competent and complex versions of each. Yellowstone is rounded out by stellar cinematography and practical sets in one of the most picturesque parts of the world. It is sad to see this show come to an end amid controversy of its lead star Kevin Costner, whose real-life behavior makes us wonder where Kevin Costner really ends and John Dutton begins. Ultimately, with its compelling characters and nuanced handling of complex interpersonal and sociopolitical topics, Yellowstone shows exactly what it takes to make a successful western drama in the modern age. The magic of the western genre is alive and well. We just need to be savage enough to find it. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite western? What do you think about Yellowstone? Let me know down below. You stay tuned and stay cool. My job as a storyteller is to pick a world and look through the window and not judge it and go, hey, here's what it was. Yeah. And and here's the decision some people made. And, you know, for me, you know, the holy grail as a storyteller is entertain, educate, and enlighten. Don't give anybody answers, just lots of questions to think about. That's my job. Because I can't stand to pay money and have somebody preach to me yeah. their ideas.